Does your laptop ever get fire hot? Yep, that's looking pretty toasty. Oh, that's definitely not normal. Why is that fence allowed? No doubt that's going to cost a fortune to fix. Well, maybe not quite that much. But you will have to break open the piggy bank. Or maybe you don't. Check this out. Dell Latitude 5580 Thermal Fix. A little bit of silicon pad and we'll get rid of all this heat in no time. So we're going to need thermal paste. Isopropyl alcohol. A silk cloth. That one's well used. And a small Phillips head screwdriver. Precision instrument. Here we go. Check out the specifications there if you're familiar with the laptop. You probably know there are different trims. This particular one is sort of in the middle. Relatively decently equipped. We got about 16 gig of RAM. In terms of specifications on this particular one, lots of ports, USB 3 on the side, VGA output. We've even got a nice gigabit ethernet port, another HDMI and even the power port on the back, another USB as well, that'll be the fan outlet. We also have a USB-C port, Thunderbolt 3, another USB 3.0, and even a card reader. Very durable finish, and really, really nice backlit keyboard. So overall, a very well-designed, compact business laptop but able to do more than just your business needs. Yes, that's right. Don't forget to subscribe if you've enjoyed the content. Much more to come. So where do we start? We're trying to replace the thermal paste. Well, there's only one logical place. We need to get our screwdriver fully equipped. And then we're gonna open this up. Check this out. So very easy. We've got screws all the way around the back of our particular laptop. And just quickly going to speed up the footage while I fly my way through. Or is it sped up? Maybe that's my normal speed. Who knows? Quickly going through. Quite a few screws to undo. These do thankfully not fall out. But there is a critical detail that we've overlooked. I'm going to power it up and show you the problem. Using hardware info, very useful software to data log your computer. Check out some of the features here. Very well equipped. Nice GPU. we got a... 250 gigabyte Samsung NVMe, which is quite cool as well, the 980. We do have 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, pretty capable, and a very solid 7600U Intel i7 processor. Now, in terms of our thermals, right now the laptop's not doing much other than Windows, and we're going to check our thermals. So, GPU sitting around 39 degrees, and our CPU sitting on around 41 degrees although the peak temp so far was 55 so that doesn't really look like a problem it's okay i can fix that let's show you how to really stress the laptop why are we stressing it well we want to see if there's actually something wrong because there is something wrong let's see if we can find it sign bench r23 let's have a quick look at the performance while it's being stress loaded and right now rendering a rather complicated image on the particular cpu those cores working very hard let's check our temperature okay working hard yep no that's looking a little bit different so 66 and a max or peak of 83 degrees celsius which is relatively warm our minimum there was 45 and average was around 69 degrees celsius okay so it's relatively warm definite cause for concern Let's dwell a bit deeper and see if we can figure this out. Now, right now, using a precision instrument, yes, that's an ice cream stick, but it just reduces the risk of damaging the casing. Now, you do have to gently pry this. Start it off on one of the sides. There's a little bit of a protrusion there that's given you a little bit of access. But just work the device all the way through. Whatever you have handy is perfect. We've put this out of place. Screws won't fall out there, so I'm tapping. But there is our CPU attachment. We've got our RAM module there. There's our fan, which is looking a little bit dusty. Well worth compressed air to clean out. There's our Samsung 980. So that'll be a 250 gigabyte. This is our battery pack. Take note, there's two different types. The 42 kilowatt hour and even the 68 uh, watt hour, which is fairly, fairly potent. And nice slot here for a hard drive, particularly useful if you're storing a lot of data this particular one's empty we can fit an intel dual band wi-fi card present already we have a cmos battery and even the ability to run a wwan card for sim card connectivity 
Uh, definitely nice having the double RAM module. So let's see if we can get this particular shroud off. I'm using precision Phillips head tools. Uh, this particular one's the Sprotec brand. Uh, really, really handy. Quite a lot of bits. And right now, having a bit of trouble finding the right size. These are very small screws. And yeah, a little bit worried that's going to strip. So it does help to apply a little bit of force to try and ensure that that Phillips head stays nicely seated within your screws. The last thing you want is to accidentally strip one of these screws. It's not something you can't get around, but it is really annoying when it happens. So let's avoid it. So quite a few other screws. We do have the power connector there as well, which generally you want to remove. And talking about power connector, normally you'd remove the battery as well. So fairly important as a safety precaution so you do not cause any damage to the hardware and or yourself. But in this case, I'm feeling fairly confident I'm going to leave the battery fully connected, but highly recommend that you remove it. Similar process to removing for your CPU fan. Uh, very simple power connectors. But generally, these can be quite difficult to remove. So if you're careful, if you're not touching any components, you can get away without it. But just keep in mind, everything will be live. There is power there, uh, which is an ideal. While well, insulated gloves. Okay, let's keep going here. We're almost through. And right now, need to try and get this fan connector loose so we can pull off our CPU heatsink. And, okay. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. Now, I kid you not, probably spend 10 minutes. It would not budge. In fact, the plug itself started to come apart. So, let's just leave it. And let's flip this over and we'll see if we have enough slack to just be able to get the job done without actually removing the plug. But it is removable. Really odd that it wasn't budging for me. Okay, we've broken the seal, and there it goes. Not too difficult. So we do have to be careful now. It is fully attached to the PCB. We don't want to rip out the cable. That would be bad. So let's see if we can very quickly zoom in here. You'll notice a little bit of the pump out effect on the thermal paste, much more so on the CPU rather than the GPU off to the left hand side. You can see it here on the copper plate as well and not looking too bad on the GPU in fact the thermal paste still looks good thermal paste thermal compound thermal grease CPU grease there's so many names for it whichever one you're familiar with but the paste we're going to be using today is NTH1 I've been really keen to try this one from Noctua and check out the details there if you're interested it does look like a pretty solid paste pretty good range non-conductive at least electrically sorry to spray you there safety note there definitely don't get isopropyl alcohol in your eyes it's quite a nasty chemical so definitely use this in the well ventilated area so right now we're just trying to remove the somewhat burnt on and uh, well well run in thermal paste so that we are able oh that's nice and shiny perfect to fit some new thermal paste but it's quite a few components here so we'll clean up each one of them even if they look okay definitely want some fresh paste on there while we're here so that's the GPU chip. We'll try and clean that up nicely. So a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. You'll notice I'm not spraying it on the computer itself. I'm just dabbing it onto the cloth so as to avoid any potential problems. And very careful here as I do this because remember, the battery has not been removed. It should normally be removed. Uh, quick chance here to take some photos. Check out the thumbnails. I'm sure one of those will reach your eyes before you click the video. Hopefully it was a good one. Let me know. Let's continue our cleaning process, getting rid of the remaining little bit of paste sitting on our heatsink. And that's looking pretty tidy right now. So definitely be careful as you're cleaning this. You don't want the paste to end up on the computer itself. That's why you normally remove that lower connection. Oh dear, that wasn't in the plan. There's some thermal pad. That's a silicone pad, which likely is going to need to be replaced as well. So you definitely want to have some of this on hand. Thankfully, I do have different sizes on hand for various different projects. This is great. I should be able to replace it and we'll figure out what the correct sizing is for this one. Last chip being cleaned off and I'm going to call it. That's looking pretty clean. Well done. What do we do next? Well, the most logical thing to do next is to replace that thermally conductive thermal pad. So this is a silicone based pad, which is really good at conducting heat. In fact, these normally sit on top of your RAM for your GPU and this is a 10.8 watt per meter Kelvin thermal pad you get different ratings of the ability to dissipate heat so this particular one is relatively decent you do get higher but this is sort of in the middle range 
and relatively cheap. Now this particular pad still actually feels and looks really good, but we will replace it in the quest of performance, getting this laptop drawn as cool as possible. And durable, very important. So definitely put this on a flat surface, measure it out. I'm uh, doing a bit of an eyeball here, just doing it purely by feeling. We'll see how close my cut is. I'm gonna call it, that looks pretty good. Sorry, you can't see much, it's very blurry. I'm sure the camera will catch up with us eventually. Now I'll do a little bit of ghosting action here so that you can see what's going on underneath, I guess where my hands are moving. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Don't ask me how I did it. I found a way. I feel like it's kind of cool. You can see the object underneath the movement. It's really cool. Probably need a second or third camera to do this. But anyway, right now doing a slight de-dust and then I believe we are ready to start applying our thermal paste and maybe even that thermal pad. But that's looking pretty tidy. Definitely needs some compressed air. So right now it is a little bit dirty in there, but we'll save that for another time. Let's do it. Noctua NTH one thanks camera okay in terms of application lots of controversy out there but there really is only one way of doing this that's right there's only one way this is the way i will show you the way we're applying a small dab on each of our surfaces pretty standard nothing you haven't seen before however then nice clear spreader we're going to spread the thermal paste now I know it's laborious, I know it takes a very long time, and I know you don't have time or patience for such trivial things, but I'm going to encourage you to do it because you get complete coverage of the IHS. That's the integrated heat spreader of every single chipset that we're trying to cover. And yes, I know you're thinking air pockets, that's a problem with the spreader method. You get air pockets. Well, they're easy to avoid. You just put a little dot right in the middle and any air pockets will completely fade away if you want me to test it i can prove it the joys of a clear spreader it's great works really well okay there's the gpu final one there now we've spread and that's done okay it did take significantly longer than alternative methods but we're not done yet there's a little bit more to go thermal pad let's get that thermal pad in the right place so this particular one is very important it's going to keep your gpu vram nice and cool those chips do tend to get really hot especially when you're doing a very laborious task like a cinebench for example there it is peeling off both layers on the pad that is critical and oops damaged it a little bit that's okay it should compress down nicely okay we're done but wait there's more there's always that little bit extra I'm going to call this a signature move. Where do we start? Well, check this out. First step, back to our thermal paste. You probably saw this coming. We're going to get rid of any potential air pockets by applying a small dot right smack bang in the middle of the IHS. That way, we won't get any air pockets. Okay, done. You're getting the hang of this. There's more. That's right. I'm going to put some on the actual heat sink. This is quite unusual, you might not have seen this before, but I always do this to ensure that we get a very nice matting surface. Also increases longevity because we have both surfaces well lubricated. But right now I am making sure to spread it out. This layer will be relatively thin and trying to more or less estimate where those IHSs will end up. You would have noticed they're not going to cover the entire heatsink. So if anything, that's a bonus. It might actually run a little bit better. But here it is, the final closing. Now, very difficult to place, but you want to get this pretty much spot on so you don't disrupt your air pockets that we will not have because this is going to be perfect. See, told you. Now, let's quickly refit these screws. Definitely take note of where they were originally. You don't want to miss one because that'll create uneven pressure. Now I'm just going to lightly tension all of these for now. The four going over the CPU are critical. Very important to do the crisscross method. I'll give you a slight demo here. But the idea is we're gradually applying pressure, giving about two rotations, maybe one and a half rotation on each screw and then shifting our way through. That's really important to ensure that we get even spreading of the tension, also avoids those air pockets. And that's going to give us a really, really nice finish with even pressure. Very important. Okay, final check. We'll just go back through checking all of our handiwork there. Making sure they're all nicely seated and we didn't miss one. That'd be important. And still a lot of dust there. Normally I'd go through the extra mile to clean this out, but I couldn't actually get it detached. So 
We'll give it another go at another time. Yeah, bit of a shame we didn't get it clean next time. It's okay. I'm sure it'll work perfectly. A little bit of cinematic B-roll before. Are we done? Can we close this back up? I think we're done. That was easy. So much of costing a lot of money. That was an absolute breeze. Easy fix. But did it work? It's okay. We'll figure it out really soon. And everything in reverse to get your rear panel back on. And yes, take note, those screws on that particular panel doesn't actually come out, which is great. They don't fall out, but in case you run into some problems, you may want to keep an eye on them just in case if someone else has been there, you never know. Okay, I think that's done. And definitely note the locations of the screws, very important. Okay, that's feeling much uh, cooler already. Let's find out. Stress check. Gonna give it some data. We need to see how this thing performs under normal conditions and let me zoom in for you so you can see what we're up to switching to our hand cam sorry footage isn't really great need to find a better way to record other than stressing the computer it wasn't powerful enough to do obs sorry about that let's have a look okay starting it up peak so far 70 degrees not as low as i would have wanted but that's okay that's our peak temperature very important to note on at least one of the cores so one of them still running relatively warm but that's okay stress test so we won't run the full test necessarily that may not be necessary it's a 10 minute test on Cinderbench but let's let it run for a few minutes and we'll see what it does and there's our precision instrument I'm seeing a 77 peak on that particular core both of them in fact notice the temperatures are exactly equal that's not a coincidence, that's a product of our excellent, excellent spreading technique. Really, really good. So that's a solid drop. I'm going to call it somewhere around 5 to 6 degree drop on peak temperature, which may not be as much as you would want, but that could be the difference between fans running at full glass and fans running at half, half speed. Maybe. GPU running nice and cool, although didn't really expect to see a difference there. I think it was 39 before, now it's 42, so probably still about the same. Maybe slightly worse, maybe the original pace was actually really good. But nonetheless, we're not stressing the GPU and we didn't have any problems with that. It was just a CPU running really hot. But so far I'm going to call it. That looks like some pretty solid gains. Peak there for the GPU, no major change, but we didn't expect anything. But for the CPU, that's a solid 6 degree drop. Check that out. It only went up to 71 degrees in that particular test on the one core. The other core... 74 man that's awesome and this is future data from daily use for six months six months later how cool is that and so far it's looking really good no complaints temperatures are good gpu still around 43 don't know how accurate that is hopefully enjoy the content stay tuned for future videos i'll see you on the next one